Hi, I, I gave you um, some worksheets that we're going to be using um, over the next couple days and you know we just we just finished up section 5.5 five, and you watched a video over 5.6 and these worksheets have to do with various topics and things that we have covered in chapter 5 and I thought it would be good if I can at least get you started to help you um, understand what is going on on these things and, and at least help you get going on them. And this one worksheet that I gave you, and you got it in class today, it said graph the rectangle whose vertices are negative 4, 7, 12, 7, negative 4, negative 3, and 12, negative 3. So what we're going to do is we're going to take graph paper and we're actually going to graph these. Um, and so let me get out graph paper here. I made a, a piece of graph paper on here. Um, I wonder if I can actually, uh, there, uh, I didn't want to do that. I wanted to try to turn, I wonder if I can view, if I can, uh, ro there we go, I want to rotate this thing. I want to rotate this, and that might be better if I do it this way. Okay, so I have a sheet of graph paper, and you might want to rotate this graph paper when you do this sideways like this. And what I'm going to do is I have to graph these points onto my graph paper. All right. So to do that, let me. I gotta quickly get back to here real quick. There we go. Okay. And I want to graph these points. Let me make a x-y axis here. There's a y-axis on my graph paper, and there is an x-axis on my graph paper. Okay. So if you're looking at that sheet. The points we have to graph are negative 4, 7, so that'd be 4 left, 7 up, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Negative 4, 7 would be one point. And then I have the point 12, 7. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 7. And then I have the point negative 4, negative 3. And I have the point 12, negative 3. And there's my rectangle. So let me, I'll take a different color so it's different than the XY axis. And let's just uh, get our rectangle here. There we go. There's one point, or one side, I should say. There's another. And I'm graphing the rectangle. Now, you didn't need me to do that, but the next things we might need help on, okay? So it says. Construct lines through each of the vertices of the rectangle that are parallel to the diagonals of this rectangle, and then investigate the following questions. So this is the part where we got to know some vocabulary, and we want to construct lines that are parallel to the diagonal. So let's get a diagonal first. Now remember, a diagonal, when you have vertices of a figure, a diagonal connects two um, vertices that are not already connected by sides. So if that sounded really complicated, let me say it again. I'm going to label this rectangle A, B, C, D. Point D is already connected to point A and point C by sides, but it's not connected to point B. So if I draw a segment from D to B, it's called a diagonal. So I'm going to do that right now. Okay, now let me get the slope of this diagonal. The slope of this diagonal, if I count, the slope of diagonal DB would be the following. The slope would be, I had to rise um, 10, and I had to run, um, it looks like I had to run 16. I rose 10, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And I had to run 4 and 12 more. I had to run 16. So the slope of this is 10 sixteenths, and 10 sixteenths is 5 eighths. So the slope of DB is 5 eighths. Now what I want to do is I want to construct lines that are parallel to this diagonal through these points. So let's do that. If I go to point A, I can construct a line through point A, point A that's parallel to this by going to point A and rising 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and running 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. OK, 
construct another point, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a line through those two points now. So when I draw a line through those two points, I would get uh, that, and let me go this way too. There, okay, I've just constructed the line through point A that is parallel to the diagonal. I want to do the same thing for point C, so let's do that. I have to rise 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and run 8, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Okay, let me draw a line through that. And I'll go the other way too. You can use your ruler to do this. Okay, so I've just drawn lines through point A and C that are parallel to diagonal DB. But I have a second diagonal I've got to draw, and that is the diagonal AC. So I'm going to draw a diagonal through AC. And the slope of diagonal AC. So diagonal AC, I want to find the slope. The slope of AC, maybe I should write the word slope here for DB, the slope of DB. The slope of AC would be I fell 10 and I ran 16. Drop 10, run 16. My pen stopped responding here for a minute. Hold on. I'm going to pause this while the pen is, if I can. There we go. Okay. Uh, drop 10, run 16. My slope is negative 10 sixteenths, which is the same as negative 5 eighths. So I want to draw a line through D and B that's parallel to oops, negative 5 eighths. That's parallel to the slope here of negative 5 eighths. So let's do that. Drop 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and go over 8, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Let me draw a line through those points real quick. That line's going to do this, and it's going to do... There, okay. So I have a line parallel to... A, C through point D. I also have to do the same thing through point B. So to get a line parallel to A, C, since the slope is negative 5 eighths, I've got to go to point B and drop 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and run 8, which is this point here. And actually you can see I, if I, I got a, a line, I got these three points lined up, all I have to do here is draw a line through those three. Do that there. And I guess I can go the other way a little bit here, too, just to draw it out more. There we go. Okay, and what you're going to see, what you see here is when we did that, we have now drawn a second shape. It's a parallelogram, and maybe I can just quickly highlight that in, this, in case you're not seeing it. I can see this parallelogram. This parallelogram is right over... Oops, come on, highlighter, not pen. You can see there's a parallelogram. Here's one side of it here. There's another side of it here. Here's another side, and there's another side. Okay? And now what they want me to do is answer questions about this. It says the first question. I'll, I'm not going to do all of this. I'll do some of it to get you started. Write equations for each of the sides of the given rectangle. Label the equations on your graph. Well, I'll do one side of my rectangle. AB is the line Y equals 7. Remember, it's a flat horizontal line, and it's 7 units up. I guess I'll do one more. BC would be the line X equals 12. It's the vertical line 12 units over. Okay? Um, what are the vertices of the resulting parallelogram? Well, I'll give you one of the vertices. One of the vertices, maybe I'll call my parallelogram just so we can label it. I'm going to call it E, F, G, H. Vertice F is the point 4 right and 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 up. There's one vertice. It's 4, 12. Maybe I'll get one more. Point G had to be the point... 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. It's the point 20 
2. Okay? So I got two of the vertices. You need to get the other two. Write equations for each of the sides of the resulting parallelogram. Label them on your graph. Well, this is where point slope form comes in handy. To write an equation for FG, here would be the equation. The equation for FG, I can write it in point slope form very easily. So I'm going to put the equation for FG would be, here's a point on that line. So I'll do Y minus 12 equals, we already know the slope for this line is negative 5 eighths and x minus 4. There is an equation for line FG. I need you to write equations for line EF, HG, and EH. Okay? Find the area of the rectangle. Well, that should be easy. Area equals length times width. And you can count squares to get the length and the width and find the area. Find the area of the parallelogram. A parallelogram's area um, we can find out with uh, base times the height. Or actually for this problem, it'd probably be easier to do the following. To find the area of the parallelogram, I, I should scratch what I just said. I wish I could erase it. I, I guess in this case, since they don't tell us the direct height, there's another way we could do it. Let me use a highlighter. You, in the previous portion, you already found the area of, the, of this uh, rectangle. That was the previous question. So I, let me get it a different color. Do you see how there are four triangles in pink? If you take the area of the rectangle and add the area of each of the triangles, you'd have the area of the whole parallelogram. So to, remember, to find the area of a triangle, you do one-half base times height. Finding the area of a triangle is easy. You take the length of the base. In this case, the base we said was it's 16 units long. Can you see how my height here is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5? The height's 5. Well, this triangle has an area, base 16, height 5. This is half of 80. That's 40. This pink triangle here, I'll just write it big, has an area of 40. You just need to find the area of the other three triangles, add 40 to that, and add the area of the rectangle, and you have the whole area of the whole thing. Okay? I'm going to, I'll let you do the rest of that. I just wanted you to get started on it. Okay? Next thing. If you take a look at the, there was another worksheet I gave you. Um, it's this one. It's about midpoints. Okay? And you are going to be asked to find midpoints. And to find a midpoint, it's very easy to do. There's a formula to find the midpoint. It's right here. Okay? And this formula looks really complicated, but it's very simple. If you have two points given to you, you can find the midpoint by taking the x values, adding them, and dividing by 2, and taking the y values, adding them, and dividing by 2. Okay? It might be simpler for me to show you that on graph paper. So I'm going to do that right now. I'm going to, I'm going to draw on this graph paper. Let me, uh, oops, get that down. Let me get out a sheet of graph paper. So what I want to do is give you an example on graph paper. Okay, so let me just show you one, and I'll show you why this formula is useful, okay, and why you, having a formula for a midpoint is important. And by the way, Finding midpoints, you will find midpoints in geometry class all the time. Mr. Keller will be very happy that I'm going over the midpoint formula right now, and you can tell him that, that I told you that next year when you see him. Okay? So let's just make up two simple points. Like here's, here's two simple ones. Um, let's do the point 1, 3, and let's do the point, uh, we're going to do the point, let me see, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, we're going to do the point 7, 3. And I want to find the midpoint of these points. Now, maybe one more thing I should talk about. The midpoint means it's the middle of these two points. The midpoint means the point in between. In between two points. So when you look at an easy one like this, you're probably looking and saying, well, boy, Mr. Lemansky, that's easy enough. It's right here. 
That's the point in between these two, and that's the point for three. And you'd be correct. Okay, there's the midpoint. Now, you might be wondering, well, wait a minute. Why do I need a formula for that? I can just look at this picture. Well, it's not always that easy. What if I give you these two points? There's a point here. We'll call it, this is the point negative 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. It's negative 4, negative 6. And I have a point over here, and this is the point 2 and 5. What if I ask you to find the point in between those two? Well, it's not going to be very easy to try to guess what's in between. So you use a formula, a very simple formula. You take the two x values, you add them together, and you divide by 2, and you take the two y values, add them together, and divide by 2, and whatever point that creates is the midpoint. So let's do that. You take the two x values and add them together. 2 plus negative 4, and you divide by 2. We'll do that in a minute. You then take the two y values and add them together. 5 plus negative 6, and you divide by 2. Let's actually work that out. 2 plus negative 4 on top, that's negative 2, and we're dividing that by 2, and 5 plus negative 6 is negative 1, and we're dividing that by 2. Well, negative 2 over 2 is negative 1, and I get negative half. The midpoint of these two points is the point negative 1, negative half, and you can see that looks like a point that's right in between those two. That's how we find the midpoint of two points. We use a simple formula to do so. Okay? And I did that, I showed you that, because when you turn this over, um, and you turn the worksheet that we just did over, you're going to see they're going to have you draw another quadrilateral. They're going to ask you to find midpoints. And on the other sheet that I gave you, again, we're going to be practicing on midpoints. So midpoints is something we need to know how to do. Okay? I'm going to stop my video here. I think that will get you going on the, on the number five worksheet I gave you. You're going to have class time to work on the number six, seven worksheet I gave you, but this video will help you just get going on to that in class and we can cover um, or go over any other questions you might have in class then on the worksheets tomorrow.